This is new. What? Oh. What's what's new? Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> you have to a great start, Jack. I feel like I'm off to a great Dra start. Dragon's Dogma is the old role-playing game by Capcom Games yeah. that is now new again on Steam. This came out a few years ago on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and has been given new life on the PC. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a strange thing because it wasn't really a, a major hit. Like, I don't think I even heard about it at the time. Dragon's Dogma was just a, you know, a moderate, low-key-ish game that came out on the consoles a few years ago. And now it's been released on Steam, and it's, it's, it's fairly popular on Steam right now. I mean, I, I wonder, you know, what, what other games in, in the recent past that they could, they could do this with? I mean, they could, people could probably make money this way by re-releasing an older game that had, you know, extremely good gameplay and then just putting it on the, on the PC where you get like, you know, HD resolutions and you can use the keyboard and mouse, just any old game. So Dragon's Dogma is an open world fantasy RPG. Yes. <laughs> there be dragons and goblins and ogres and wizards and everything that's in every other medieval fantasy RPG is in Dragon's Dogma. Here's, here's the word I use for it. It's generic fantasy. Yes. It's as generic as you get. Like sometimes maybe they'll try and put like a spin on the fantasy to make it a little bit, little bit more unique, a little bit their own thing. Like Thief is a fantasy world, but it's got like Alice in Wonderland weird elements yeah, and st yeah. steampunk elements. No, this is just straight. You got elves and, well, there's not even elves. No, no you elves. Got, you got dragons. You got yeah. dragons and goblins. You got a sword. And this, this, this is kingdom and villages. You got knights and you got magicians. Like this is this is straight up the once and future king kind of setting. It's Tolkien without the elves or hobbitses. Maybe there's a hobbits. I didn't see any. Rich, it's the emperor. It's the. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Now witness the power of my fully operational cyclops. I'm afraid this Cyclops is fully operational. Oh, tiny smalls will die. <laughs> <laughs> Story-wise, you play the Arisen, and the Arisen is a very powerful warrior. He's a player character. For some reason. He's, he's, he's this generic, you are destined to slay the dragon. There's the story, yeah, by the way. Why are you destined to slay the dragon? Because it's a generic fantasy. You slay the dragon, that's what you do. You, you, you knight, there's your sword, go at it. You, you know what to do, do it. Like, why are you the Arisen? Why are you the hero of the land? What makes you special? Nothing, nothing, you every, were, nothing were, makes you were, sense. You were chosen because you're the player. <laughs> Because you're the To player. save the fantasy world, the generic fantasy world. What do you want? What, the, what do you want, Jack? What, what I'm looking for is like, you know what I want to be? I want to be the schmuck in the village who decides to fight um, for, for a reason. You pick that reason. That's why the character is given no dialogue. In my, in my head, when I played this game, right? My, my, my character was a, a, a retired warrior. Uh, lost some people he knew in battle and was, was sick of the whole thing and then he just wanted to settle down and be a fisherman for a while until this dragon attacks and it draws him back into the action. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, God. What? Dragons. I, man, I don't care about dragons. There is, like, there is someone who is furiously masturbating to this cutscene as we speak. Yeah. Oh, look at that dragon. Oh, fuck yeah! Look at that dragon! Oh, he's eating other dragons? Oh, fuck yeah! Uh, what, here's what I want to say. Here's how I want to start this off. Yeah. I have very complicated feelings about Dragon's Dogma. Okay. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Except for some very specific things, right? So I loved every part of it except I hated the setting. 
And I hated the story. And I hated the combat. And I hated the pawn system. <laughs> And I hated every single side quest. And I hated every single main story quest. I hated every individual part of this game, yet somehow managed to have a very good time playing it. I mean, I don't know that each individual element is... Well, for me. For me, it was bad. Bad! I'd say a lot of the individual elements kind of range from, like, C to D. Maybe, maybe one aspect of the game is like a B, but overall, the game is more than the sum of its parts. There she is. There's Babs. You're calling her Babs, huh? Well, her, her real name is Betty Boobs. You didn't see that? I put in her name. It was Betty Boobs. But her nickname is Babs. The characters. Sure. D minus. <laughs> D minus. Yep. Like we already talked about the, the player character. You're the the arisen. No details are given. Silent protagonist, which by the way is something I typically hate the silent protagonist. I hate it when you talk to an NPC and they act like you're saying something when you said nothing. Every person you run into is that same slate of medieval fantasy. Everyone, every every NPC is a, I wanna say dull character. Everyone is flat and dull. There's nothing to give life. Sometimes, sometimes there's an accent. I am the general, but I am also French. Interacting with characters is part of the game. You know, you're supposed to go on all these side quests. You're supposed to learn about the village through all of these NPCs, but every single one of them is a dullard. I work in a farm. <laughs> Sometimes I farm. Uh, the weird thing is the pawns. Yes, very strange. Right, then you, you like one of the earliest things that happened to you in this game is you find out you're the special destined arisen. You're the arisen. You're gonna what you're gonna face and slay the dragon, maybe. <laughs> and and the, the 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 gods, the rift, the the powers that be, give you your own person that you basically own. You're given a slave in this game. You're given a slave. You're a slave owner. Now, what? like you you'd think though, like in an RPG that your party would all have a lot of their own characters and there'd be dialogue between the party and, and, and character dynamics going on there. The weird thing about your pawns is they're, they're creepy, willless, soulless people. They're specifically people with no will of their own. The only guidance they get is the guidance that your character gives them. They have a special thing in the game called the learning chair, which is like a timeout corner. <laughs> for your pawns, and you have to sit them down, and if they're not behaving correctly, you tell them what to do. Like, you, you, you put your, your main slave, because I'm not gonna call them pawn, they're your slaves. slaves. You put your main slave in this, the, the timeout chair, yeah. and then you have like the, the performance review meeting with them, you sit down two across the table from them, and then your slave is like, master, and they always call you master, which is creepy in and of itself almost. Um, when I say things in battle, I tend to be very confident. Do you like that? And you could say, no, I want you to be, and you got like a list, arrogant or timid, and you, you tell them what their personality is. <laughs> and it's the, <laughs> the creepiest thing ever. You, you're, you're, it's like you're traveling around with this, this group of soulless mannequins. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very weird, and, and so then, so you have your main slave, but then you can also grab two additional slaves literally off the street. You can go into the magic stone to grab more slaves, or you can just see a slave on the street and say, you're mine now, and they go, of course, master, I will serve you. E Eagle Joe Blow Me. Eagle Joe Blow Me. My name is Jablow Me. My friends call me Eagle. <laughs> and you just look at him and you're like, you don't have any friends, do you? <laughs> no. But if I did, they'd call me Eagle. There's two kinds of fights that are in my, in my head. Mm -hmm. There's two kinds of fight. There's the man size fights, and then there's the beasts fights. Yes. And 
the man size fights, I'm gonna say are worse than generic. You, yeah. You're pressing one button. Not the deepest combat system. Eh. Nope. You got Fireblaze. My combo is uh, X, X, X. Uh-huh. X, X, X. Yep. X, 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 X. That seems about right. Look for more goblins. You got Fireblaze. So you have your, your light attack. Yeah. And your heavy attack. And then you can equip some special attacks. Your primary and secondary weapon, you can each store like three attacks and you have a lot to choose from. Yeah. So that's, you can kind of design your own character that way. I, but really, you know, it all boils down to just like, what's the most efficient way to kill someone? And for all the man-sized enemies, I always found the most, and I, I played as the, uh, the, the ranger, you yeah. know, so I had two daggers. So my most effective attack was just the light attack, spam. Do, 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 do. That was it. And every once in a while, I'd hang back and use my bow and arrow, because I got a cool magic bow and arrow. Um... But I've, I found everything that was not a giant beast, I found to be terribly unsatisfying combat. Didn't you try switching out your, your classes at all? You can, you can vary up your play style by choosing a new class. Like. Absolutely. And I did try, like I tried the, the, uh, the warrior, because I like, I like big, yeah. dumb hammers. And that was kind of fun, but not... It was different? It was can you different. give it that? It was very different. It was, it's very different, and so like, Finding your perfect fighting style is probably in there. But again, I just found it bland. Now I'm gonna say this uh, about the combat, because maybe this is just our mindset, because we were both just recently playing a lot of the new Bloodborne DLC. Isn't, right now, isn't just about anything compared to Bloodborne, a, like a huge step down? Especially this, because it's kind of, average combat to begin with, and you go from Bloodborne to average, and it's like, oh my god! <laughs> it really, it really shows, like, Bloodborne, you know, but, like, not even Bloodborne, like, you know, you look at, you look at something like, you know, like the Batman multi-person combat system, you look at something where you can chain together attacks for combos. I, Ninja give, Gaiden. Give me combos, fucking, like, light, light, heavy, give me something more then light attack, light attack, light attack, heavy attack, heavy attack, heavy attack, light attack, light attack. Her name is Quinoa. You know what that is? It's like a rice dish. Killer and eater. Alright. Oh my god, you're really killing her! <laughs> but... And you and I experienced this firsthand while playing that first four hours of this game. Yeah. The beast fights. Pretty neat. Awesome. I, th I like that. That was it. That was the whole game for me. That that's what made it a good game for me was finding the beast. Well, I think I think that's what the game was pretty much designed around the, the beast fights. I don't think they cared about the the roving bands of goblins and bandits as much because. <clears throat> It's not even a, it's like, it's like, it's like just the open world. This game is an open world. And the open world is basically littered with boss fights that you'll just encounter while exploring the woods. Like, you're going down, you're just walking down the forest with your party and suddenly a, a, a fucking griffin jumps out of the sky and starts attacking you. Yep. And you know what? Sometimes it flies away. <laughs> and sometimes you can, you can they have, defeat it. They have weak points. You can like attack the wings to ground the griffin. You can you can climb up on, on on top of a monster, and you can like start attacking like like this is like a cyclops in the middle of the road. You jump on the cyclops arm, you just start wailing away at his arm, and eventually you're going to injure his arm, and he's going to drop the club. Yeah, these these epic boss fights. Like, uh, did you better than the Bloodborne boss fights? Arguably, oh, oh, way better than the Bloodborne boss fights. They're they're like they're these giant. My my favorite monsters were the stone golems that had these glowing weak spots all over them. So you'd have to crawl and stab the glowing weak spot and, and then like eventually it would explode and the, it would go crazy. It was, oh, I loved it. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just, my favorite boss fight, I was just randomly exploring the woods and a gigantic fucking dragon started shooting fire at me. And I was like, I, I, I was having trouble getting away from it. And so I was like, fuck it, I'm fighting the dragon. And somehow I won because he had the glowing weak spot in his chest and every now and then it would go up and roar and then you shoot the arrow and you hit the weak spot and never... 
It was neat. It was fun. It was really neat. You know, it was it, it was basically like micro Shadow of the Colossuses. <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. So the the fights are great. Uh, again, to roll into a problem, the the Chimera, Chimera, whatever, right? Oh, the the Chimeras. Chimeras, yeah. Chimera? Well, oh, Chimera, maybe. maybe one of the other. Chimera, Chimera, You're walking tomato, in the woods. tomato, the lion, goat, snake. The lion, goat, snake. Because <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> These are generic ancient monsters. Yeah. And, you know, the ancients didn't have a big imagination. <laughs> because they're like, let's think of a monster. Oh, just take three animals and shove them together. Now it's a monster. <laughs> yeah. It's a really fun fight. My complaint is on monster design. Bland, unimaginative, uninspired. Oh, somewhat passable because they are classic monsters, though. Sure. The Cyclops has a nice nod to it. Yeah. There is a theory that uh, Cyclops came to be because people saw like an elephant skull. And an elephant skull's got that giant hole for the nose. And if you've never seen an elephant, and you see like some kind of mammoth skull, an animal that's been extinct for 100,000 years, 10,000 years, you, you, you think that's a giant eye. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a one-eyed skull from, from a giant. And the cyclops in this game, if you look at them, their skin looks kind of like an elephant. If you look at like the feet and their gray skin, the way it looks, the wrinkles. That's a nice. That's a nice little nod. No, and the Cyclopses also have like two big tusks the, the, yes. coming out of them. Cyclops is fun, but like the goblins. You just played Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just played Bloodborne. Bloodborne has brilliant-looking monsters. Bloodborne <laughs> has amazing combat and the the best monster designs like in anything ever. Yeah. I'm just saying. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at these things in relative terms, why you probably feel the way you do about Dragon, Dragon's Dogma. I, I'll agree with you, but I, I guess like th this is all my, th you know, the, my whole, the whole crux of my discussion here yeah. is that I did not like each individual element, yeah. but somehow I had a really great time playing the game, where it's like the monster design, I was, um, oh, it's, a, it's another Chimera. Oh. But fighting it was exhilarating. Here's, here's why I think the game is more than the sum of its parts. Okay. It does a very good job of being a, just kind of like a depthful experience. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, what Dragon's Dogma does, it, it strips all of the things I hated about those old Nintendo era RPGs. You get rid of the combat, uh, you replace the obnoxious characters with bland characters, but at least they're not obnoxious. Um, <laughs> But it does have the things I like about those old Nintendo, Super Nintendo era RPGs, which was the exploration. Lots of towns to explore, lots of people to talk to, lots of, lots of shops. Uh, the, the world is just fucking littered with, with different items and, and, and weapons. And you never know when you get to a new area, what, yeah, I'm gonna find this, this, maybe I'll find this new great sword. No, and I can, I can make that sword better. I can power it up and you know, let me mix and match this armor to find armor I like. So there's a lot, of, lot, of, lot, of, lot of exploration. There's a lot of just depth in the world. It's a great tactic to do. I'm gonna pet my puppy. <laughs> You're my puppy now. You're my puppy now. Puppy or coat? <laughs> my tactic is throwing it against a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was very ready to really hate this game. Mm -hmm. I got about 15 hours in and I hated it. And you know because it's so you know the story I hated it. and I was going through the the story missions and I was going through the side quests and I'd just gotten done with the side quest where like, I had to talk to people in the village and so I'm just running around the village looking for someone with a question mark over their head and it was dull and I hated it. And so then I remember that this is a video game and it's a role playing game so I can play the game however I want. And so I decided that my character, Betty Boobs, was a gypsy. She didn't want to go into any town, so I didn't. <laughs> 
And I spent, I'm not exaggerating, the next 30 hours of the game not going into any town, not paying attention to the story, and not doing any side quests. And I had an amazing time. <laughs> I just walked the entire map fighting monsters. I, I was a farmer, I guess, because I was just picking grass and eating grass. I was just an explorer, and it was great. Well, there's, there's a ton of hidden depth. There, there's so much in the world and you know, like you can find, you know, like healing fountains and you can find monsters and cliffs and valleys and just weird shit all over the place. As long as you don't pay any attention to the story, it's amazing. And if you don't pay any attention to the side quests, it's amazing. <laughs> I actually, we should, I want to talk a little bit about the side quests before I go into my final, final thoughts. There are like a thousand side quests. You didn't like them. I like them. I spent most of my time with the game just doing the side quests, not because I was avoiding the main story, just because I was enjoying the side quests. I felt like, like for the most part, especially the beginning side quests, yeah. it's take person from point A to point B. They're all, they're all... Uh, you didn't explore them enough. There's some, there's some, there's some neater ones. There's... I, yeah, I, I ran out of patience. I, uh, I resurrected a man's dead son, okay? Yeah, I did that too. It's dumb. Who cares? Who cares? You go down the thing, a goblin. Uh, so, you know, they did have, in the, the story, did have a couple dungeons, which were really great. Yeah. It starts off slow, this game, but it gets better. It does. It starts off really slow. And, and you know, the, the strength of the game is you can play it how you want. You can play it at your own pace and the game is prepared for you to play it however you want. How much is the game? It's like 30? 20, 30 bucks. It's yeah. a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of bang for your buck. Stab him in the butt. Oh, can you grab him? Can you grab him and climb? <gasps> oh right. my God, Shadow of the Colossus up in here. That's fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Fucking stab him in the neck. I like this. I officially like this. I mean, I just, I just want to summarize. Yeah. Summarize her. Like, if you look at the, the combat, C to C minus combat, very average. Setting, C, C minus. Maybe even a D plus because it's fantasy, but it's like, it's like kind of uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Ring inspired fantasy, which instead of being like bright and colorful, is just kind of like brown and dull looking generic fantasy, which is just visually, in my opinion, the worst thing ever. Who, d who decided it was a good idea to try to make fantasy more realistic? I have no fucking idea, but it's not a good idea. No, no. <laughs> it's fantasy. Let it be fantasy. The, the, the characters are C minus at best. The story, C minus. The inventory system, which we didn't talk about much, is really a kind of a clunky mess. The inventory system, D. Yet, you know, I first started playing the game, like, yeah, this game's about a C, and then I played a little bit more, yes, you know, it's getting better, C plus. And then like, like five, seven hours into the game, a solid B, solid B. Oh no, you know what, B plus. <laughs> My, the more I play this game, I think just because it manages to feel really deep, that it just keeps going up, my opinion of this game. It's, it's more than the sum of its parts. Agreed. The, the exploration, the, the towns, uh, of the, the joy of finding a, a new piece of armor, or a new sword that kicks ass, the, the joy of your character slowly getting stronger. The joy uh, of stumbling across a beast. The joy of stumbling across a beast? You, and because, you know, they kick your ass at first. Yeah. But then you're crawling over an ogre and it's great. <laughs> and, and even though as, as characters they're creepy because they have no will of their own, kind of just creating your own party member is kind of neat. And I wish you could do it with all of your party members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. more, more than the sum of its parts. Good, good, good uh, thumbs up. Four, four stars out of five and a half. What? <laughs>